This is an introductory video on cascade control. First of all, let's go ahead and review what is cascade control. Let's say I have a standard feedback loop. Okay, I'm going to do a set point. I want to drive my, drive my process variable to this set point. I have a controller, uh, maybe a final control element like a valve, and then I have my process. And this is going to be my process variable, and I might have a measurement, di measurement dynamics as well. So this is a standard feedback control loop. One of the things that we're going to be looking for are disturbances that are going to affect our process. So I have a disturbance that uh, you know I can either measure or not measure, and that's going to affect my process. Okay, I'll just add that in right there. It drives me away from the set point. And then I have an error between my process variable, my measured process variable, and my set point. And then my feedback control loop is going to then take care of that error. But let's say we can measure the disturbance or measure the effect of the disturbance, and we want to reject it before it causes me to have an error in my system. Okay, so just as a graph, I'm going to have a set point. Okay, and let's say there's my process variable, and I have a disturbance that repeatedly brings me away from that set point. Then can I do something with my manipulated variable? Okay, here might be my manipulated variable right at this point when I measure that disturbance to counteract it in some way so that the disturbance uh, effect is not as great. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing with uh, cascade control, is we're going to be uh, looking for a disturbance right uh, here. And uh, you know, common cascade controller is like a flow controller. Uh, where you might have an upstream pressure change or something like that, uh, you know, that's that's changing the flow, and you want to, if you can maintain it constant with this inner loop, then you're able to achieve better control. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to erase uh, some of this, and um, we have this controller. This is the we'll call this the master uh, or the outer loop uh, controller. That's going to provide a, a set point. Um, that's going to provide a set point to the inner loop. Okay, and then I'm going to have a, another plus minus, and then I'm going to have a second controller. Okay, and then that is going to change the valve, um, and then I'm going to have something like a flow, but I'm going to have a feedback there. Okay, there's my minus there and my plus. Okay, so this is an inner loop right here. And that's when we have a cascade. We call it a cascade because the outer is giving a set point to the inner and we're cascading the set points down. Okay, so uh, we're also gonna talk about uh, the process dynamics that are necessary. Uh, you know that this inner loop right here has to be much faster than the outer loop. Okay, so we typically want it to be about three times uh, faster than the outer loop in terms of following the set point. And we'll show you an example of why that's the case. So what types of controllers are used? Uh, we'll talk about that. And then how do you tune uh, these cascade controllers? So first of all, cascade design. Uh, ca characteristics for selecting this early warning. Um, you know, In this case, it might have been that flow. Uh, they include, it has to be measurable with a, a sensor. So we're adding an additional sensor to our feedback controller. And we're setting up an inner feedback loop. We also have to use the same final control element, for example, in a valve that's used to manipulate this outer loop PV also manipulates the inner loop PV. Okay, so the same disturbances that are also of concern for PV1 also disrupt PV2. 
and then uh, we need PV2 uh, to respond to the set point changes of the inner loop much faster than the outer loop. Okay, so here's some trade-offs or misconceptions, problems with cascade controllers. Uh, generally, adding this uh, secondary controller uh, does not make the feedback control system faster. Okay, it's just going to reject frequent disturbances that might be affecting the process. Also, the secondary controllers are often more complicated. Once you start adding cascade layers, uh, this whole feedback control often becomes much more difficult to maintain and tune, and that's just uh, an added layer of complexity that you're adding to the system. Um, just an observation is that cascade control tends to be overused. Okay, we tend to build in complexity as different events happen in control systems, and and it's easier to add things than to take them out. Okay, so sometimes a system can actually be improved by just removing these layers of cascade control with simpler uh, single loop systems. So just some things to watch out for on cascade control. Also, um, you know, a common cascade controller that you see very frequently, let's say you have a, uh, a tank uh, reactor, for example, and uh, you might be trying to maintain a temperature in that reactor. Okay, and I'll put a temperature controller. And, uh, you know, let's say we want to adjust uh, you know, the flow coming into the reactor, um, let's say a reactant or something like that. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this would be a, a common feedback uh, control system. And uh, what we're going to do here is if we have, for example, a delta P, uh, you know, pressure change from the inlet side, uh, you know, maybe that fluctuates with time, that's a disturbance, so the same valve position gives me different flow rates. I can add a flow transmitter and then set up a flow controller that's going to maintain that uh, flow that we requested. And now the temperature controller, instead of writing directly to the valve, it writes a set point to the flow controller. So this is a cascade uh, control structure. This is the master right here, and then this is the secondary uh, control loop, and then we'd also call this the primary. Okay, so the really important thing here is that you can have a lot of problems if the dynamics of this secondary loop are not faster than the dynamics of the primary master loop. Okay, so if this takes uh, you know, that we need this to be about three times faster to reach the set point than the master is requesting. So sometimes we even have to detune or slow down um, the, the master controller so that we don't uh, keep changing the set point on the secondary before it can respond. Okay, so here's a building uh, heater example. And the goal is to heat up uh, an oil stream. Okay, this uh, right here, we're trying to maintain a temperature coming, uh, you know, coming out, uh, you know, of this furnace. So we're, uh, you know, we have a flame here and then uh, stack gas. Okay, and we have, uh, you know, this fuel gas coming in right here that's providing the ignition, uh, or sorry, the fuel for the, the flame. And uh, we have a temperature. We want to maintain this at a certain temperature. We might have a set point, you know, a temperature set point. Maybe that's, you know, 1,000 uh, degrees Celsius, for example, you know, whatever that might be. Okay, and so if it's too low, it's going to open up this valve a little bit more. So that might be the valve position versus time in order to maintain a temperature uh, set point. Okay, so if I'm too low, then opening up that valve is going to increase my temperature. Okay, so we have uh, a couple things here. We have uh, the controlled variable is my temperature of oil out. My manipulated variable is my flu, uh, fuel gas flow rate. 
And I'm, I have a problem here, a fluctuating fuel gas pressure. So this is my pressure of my fuel gas supply, and that is fluctuating. So one solution is cascade control for this. So if we want to measure pressure right here, now this could also be a flow controller. So for example, if I just change this to an FT and an FC, install a flow transmitter, flow meter there, and then have a flow controller, that might be more common than a pressure one. Okay, so primary loop consists of the temperature out of the oil, and this makes a set point for the secondary loop, and then the secondary loop uh, measures and controls the uh, fuel gas uh, pressure, and this is a set point Okay, this is going to be a set point to the secondary. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Uh, we have this uh, secondary controller right here and the primary right here. This might be our flow controller, for example. And this might be our temperature. Okay, uh, so let's say uh, we characterize the inner loop and we have a set point change on this inner loop. Uh, this would be a flow and this would be my set point and then my PV value, my process variable value. And let's say this takes you know, for about 63% of the way to get uh, to the new set point, it takes about 1.5 minutes. And then for my outer loop, um, I want that to respond faster, so I tune it to uh, get there in about 0.5 minutes. So does this violate our rules for implementing cascade uh, control? So the answer is uh, yes because uh, this is too aggressive. The outer loop is gonna be asking for something to change much faster than the inner loop can actually change it. Okay, so we're gonna result, that's gonna result in things like instability of this cascade controller. Here's a tank example. Uh, just one last example here where we're trying to maintain a level in our tank, and so we set up a level controller that then writes a valve position to an inlet flow. Now there's a couple disturbances that are affecting our system here. One is the outlet flow is going to change randomly as an operator turns on or off this pump. Another disturbance is that we have an inlet pressure fluctuation. It's gonna change over time. And you can see that right down here with the inlet pressure changes. And then we also have the outlet flow changes as well. And you can see that these disturbances are driving us away from our set point. So the little oscillations that you can see here, those are due to the pressure changes. And the much longer period oscillations, those are due to my uh, outlet flow. So we have a, somebody bought a flow transmitter for us. And so we want to install this in a way that'll help us reject the um, disturbances and set us, uh, give us a cascade controller. So, um, you know, where would we install that uh, to set up a cascade control system? Okay, so go ahead and pause the video right now and think about this for a little bit, and then we'll uh, start again in just a second. Okay, so. Um, what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna put this flow transmitter, we're gonna put it right up here, okay? And we'll measure 
this inlet flow, and we're going to be rejecting this inlet pressure uh, disturbance. We'll set up a flow controller, and that will adjust the valve. And now the level controller is going to be then giving a set point to the flow controller. The output of the level controller is no longer a valve position. It's now a flow controller set point. Now you might be asking, could I install this down here as well, the flow transmitter here? In that case, we would set it up as a feed forward controller and provide input to our level controller. So we can't set up a cascade uh, controller there because the outlet flow is just manually adjusted. It doesn't have the same final control element as our primary or master uh, controller. Okay, so that's it for our uh, discussion on cascade control. We'll, uh, in the next lecture, we'll be talking about uh, feed-forward control.